This is the 2025 Ram 1500 RHO, Ram's first ever Ford F-150 Raptor fighter. Now, not Raptor R fighter, that was the Ram TRX. This is the regular Raptor fighter. It's got a six-cylinder engine and all of the other updates that Ram has made to the 2025 1500. Now, this is our first opportunity to drive the new 25 RHO. So we've come here to Hollyoaks Off-Road Park in suburban Detroit to get a taste of what the new RHO does off-road and on road. But first, let me show you how I got it to be this color. The whole point of this vehicle is to be, quite frankly, a Ford F-150 Raptor fighter. It's the Raptor fighter that Ram never really had. The TRX, yeah, definitely fights the Raptor, but that fights the Raptor R because it was expensive and it came with a V8. This one has a straight six turbo motor. Now it's the high output version. So it's making 540 horsepower and 521 pounds feet of torque, made it to an eight speed automatic transmission, driving all four wheels. The more extraordinary part, however, is the suspension. This thing is using this suspension very similar to the one in the old TRX. Bildstein Blackhawk E-squared shock absorbers electronically controlled for both rebound and compression. The result of this is that you can drive this thing at rather high speeds off terrain that you would not normally drive high speed. It's meant largely for desert pre-running, but you can still do rock climbing and a bunch of other things as well, like this super steep hill. And the amount of control you have is fantastic. But even better is the amount of comfort that you have. It handles this kind of terrain absolutely beautifully. You're not getting beat up like you would in many other kinds of vehicles. It does what the Raptor does for several thousand dollars less than a Raptor does it. These are the jumps. Hang on to everything. All right. Thanks. 45. <laughs> Hell. <laughs> Everyone okay back there? Yeah. We're alive. Yeah. Everyone's back is in order. Wow. Ugh. Ow. <laughs> But off-road is not the only place that Ram said that the new RHO was going to be a lot of fun. They specifically called it a canyon carver when they introduced this thing a couple of months ago, something that would be entertaining as much on-road as off-road. And I have to say, driving this thing on-road and putting it in sport mode, it's tight. This steering firms up considerably and is actually really communicative. And the ride quality, it's level, it's smooth, it actually does feel like you could take this thing through, you know, the Malibu canyons and not, you know, the, the streets of Holly, Michigan, and actually really enjoy yourself in this thing. I'm gonna have to test that out in some more proper environment in terms of on-road stuff too. But you, again, have that three liter twin turbocharged SST high output engine, the Hurricane Straight Six, 540 horsepower, 521 pounds feet of torque. They say that this thing will go from zero to 60 in 4.7 seconds and it'll hit the quarter mile in 14.1 seconds at a speed of 104 miles an hour. Now, coming soon, you're gonna see a comparison test on cars.com and one of the trucks we're testing is the new Ram 1500 tungsten that uses the exact same powertrain as this one. Now, this one has some differences in terms of cooling and exhaust. It has a cold air intake and a, a special hood, and it's got a true dual exhaust as well. It doesn't make any more power than the tungsten does that we tested on a drag strip, but in terms of the performance numbers that they're claiming for the RHO, those are the numbers that we recorded exactly for the tungsten. So. The claims that RAM is making in terms of the straight line performance of the RHO, we've actually measured those numbers and found them to be accurate. Now you're wondering why, if this thing has a different cold air intake and has a true dual exhaust, does it not make any more power than the standard three liter Hurricane SST high output? Apparently it does make more power, but it's not 
more power overall. It's changing the curves, basically, changing the torque curve, changing the horsepower delivery curve. Because it has more flow, it can change things and produce more power down low, but not more power overall, according to Ram. So you're going to feel it when you're driving it. It might be mitigated a little bit by these rather large off-road tires, but it's still definitely a, a performance machine as much on-road as it is off-road, which is really something that the Ford Raptor can't make a claim to. The true dual exhaust does help in the way that the Hurricane Straight 6 sounds. One of the things we've said repeatedly is that the only thing you're going to miss about the old V8 Hemi powertrain is the noise, and that is frankly true here. This engine and transmission combination is perfectly responsive, it's quick, it's lighter than you'd get if you had a Hemi under the hood here, and it's also more efficient than the old Hemi was. It doesn't quite sound the same. You're not getting that great big V8 burbling roar, but you're not getting that in a Raptor either unless you go for the Raptor R. And who knows, you know, if there's a new TRX coming, what that might feature under the hood. But under the RHO's hood, that three liter straight six turbo, it sounds all right. It sounds better than it does in the other versions of the Ram 1500. And more importantly, it delivers on the speed and power and performance and smoothness and quietness and everything else that the Hemi, let's be frank here, wasn't. But the Hurricane, quite frankly, is. When you specify the RHO trim level, it comes in a couple of versions. The basic RHO model, the cheaper one, the $72,000 one that's that includes destination pricing, doesn't have a lot of the super luxurious items in here. That's another $9,900 package. But the base model will have things like a smaller screen, a horizontal screen, won't have all the cut and sewn soft touch leather on everything, uh, won't have things like the hands-free driving assist system, which is basically Ram Cruise. It's Ram's version of Super Cruise and Blue Cruise, which actually works pretty well. But this one has that luxury package, basically, to turn this thing into a, well, closer to $82,000 plus dollar luxury truck. And I have to say, it's just as nice as other Rams that cost this much. The Rams really do have the nicest interiors. The competition, specifically in like the GMC Sierra Denali, are really getting close in terms of how nice their interiors are. This one is still nicer, I have to say. The material quality in here is just top notch. The gauges are beautiful and reconfigurable. Not a huge fan of the big 14 inch vertical touchscreen, however, and it's mostly due to how it works when you've put the truck in reverse and you're trying to use backup screens and whatnot. You have less real estate for these backup screens because now it's on a smaller portion of the vertical touchscreen. So competitors like Ford and General Motors are doing that a little bit better when they have the long horizontal screen instead of the tall vertical screen. This was a cool thing when it first came out. It's not working as well in practice, unfortunately. But it does have a lot of information in here. And you still have some interesting things in here, like actual auxiliary switches down here that are part of the package that you could do things like add additional lights and wire them directly into the vehicle and control them with a lot of these switches. This panel here, which is your transfer case, is also your mode selector. You can also select mode through the touchscreen as well, but this just has a left and right toggle and an RHO mode that will help things switch between the various nine different drive modes. Eight drive modes plus a valet mode, which is a you don't get to drive mode. So nine drive modes overall. And switching left and right on this toggle, that could be a little bit annoying because you've got to go through a number of different modes to go necessarily from like automatic to sport requires you to go through snow and tow for some reason. But, you know, these are, these are little niggling things. Overall, the interior quality is fantastic. I like the fact that we have an actual shifter here and not the rotary knob that most other Ram 1500s have. But you kind of need that because that's where, you know, your, your transfer case controls would normally be. There's also a launch button here in case you really want to test out the zero to 60 and quarter mile times on a controlled course, of course, not out here in, in the open. But overall, this is supremely comfortable. It's cushy. It's large. This is probably one of the largest full-size truck interiors, front or back. It's everything we like about the Ram 1500. It's got some you know, specifics for the RHO, but getting that extra $9,000 package to add all the really nice goodies, you might as well. I mean, unless you're really looking for your bargain off-road truck, why not get the nicest one you can? 
Off-road, it's amazing. On-road, it's extraordinary. The thing can do pretty much everything. It's incredibly capable out in the muck, and yet on-road, it is actually the canyon carver that Ram said it would be. It handles beautifully, the steering is fantastic, the ride quality is exceptional, it's super quiet inside, and you can take it through mud that makes it look like this. And then you throw in the price, $72,000 to start. Now, if you want all the super nice things that this one has, you're adding in another almost $10,000, and you're looking at a price that is comparable to a Ford F-150 Raptor. But I gotta tell you, more power, nicer interior, better on-road than a Raptor, I think my choice would have to be this one. If you'd like to learn more about the new 2025 Ram 1500 RHO or any of the new 25 Ram lineup, you can look everything up at cars.com news.